All right, 2023 definitely seems to be the year of foldables. And now it's that time for the kings and the initiators of the foldable smartphone to come in and pretty much show you who's boss. Or is that really the case? Because with what I'm seeing with the Fold 5, I'm seeing Samsung coming in with the angle of refinement. Is it going to be enough, especially against the onslaught competition for 2023? Well, here's my initial hands-on with the Fold 5. And I'm going to be comparing it to the Galaxy Fold 4 that replaces it to see What's the difference and what's really new? All right, for context, I had brief hands-on with the Fold 5. This was probably around 30 to 45 minutes considering there were new products from Samsung as well, like the Flip 5 and the Watch 6 Classic amongst the new Tab S9 series. So it really gives a bit of context that, yeah, I do need to get my review units in to really test it to see how they compare. But this is more of an initial hands-on in comparison against the Fold 4 to see what's the difference and what's really new. So yeah, let's get into it. The design and build quality. Well, let me just say this. It seems like it's a case of deja vu where if it ain't broke, don't fix it, but kind of refine it, chisel around it and make it better. In this particular case, Samsung have done something that, yeah, we have been waiting for. So there is now a near enough zero gap hinge, which means finally one of the things I complained about, you can still have that and still maintain an IPX8 water resistance. Again, still no dust resistance because it's moving parts in the foldable, but I'm so glad to see that the hinge has been closed up for that flat design and look much better aesthetically. And again, it just stops all the lint and small particles from going into the inner display, which is something I just really didn't like, especially the aesthetics of it as well. And hey, it looks like Samsung put the Fold 5 on the diet because it is 10 grams lighter at 253 grams. Now I'm going to be honest with my brief hands-on with it, it didn't really fold any notice when it came to the weight reduction compared to the Fold 4. But I guess for the nature of the device, every little helps in terms of the weight saving. Yeah, it's slightly slimmer, but again, these are so negligible that really next to them when I was holding it and using it and seeing it, there wasn't really much difference between the Fold 5 and the Fold 4 when it came to that form factor. It really feels like the same phone, but I appreciate the zero gap hinge. Now, visually, it's gonna be a case to spot the difference because the only real way to really see the difference is the new icy blue color because the phantom black and the beige color is what we've been used to. And if you see them next to the Fold 4, you're gonna really struggle to tell the difference between the two. Again, you do have Corner Gorilla Glass Victus 2 for the front cover display, as well as the back cover, as well as things like improvements to the hinge, and they've talked about a dispersion layer for better protection, all the little non-visual to visual changes. It's pretty much the same phone with just small trimmings here and there. And I'll be dead honest, we were really expecting them to change the form factor to give us something closer to a 21 by nine or 20 by nine aspect ratio because it's really the same form factor. But the design and the build quality, it's been refined. I'm still up in arms and just reserving my thoughts until I actually get to spend time with it, but it really does feel very similar indeed. Next is the display experience and again, I'm not gonna bore you with all the specs and the hardware of the display experience because guess what? It's exactly the same as the Fold 4. And we're talking about the 6.2 inch outer cover display with that candy bar remote form factor, which is more close to like 23.1 by nine aspect ratio. It's a HD plus display, 120 Hertz, and it's adaptive between 48 Hertz. It's the same display in that retrospect. And the same for the inner display as well, which is 7.6 inches compared to the Fold 4. Same resolution, same refresh rate. The biggest benefit to the inner display is the fact that it gets the same maximum brightness as the S23 Ultra, which is 1,750 nits, which I appreciate. I don't remember them mentioning anything about the outer display having that, so just take that for what it is. And again, it does have S Pen support. And remember, you do need a special edition of the S Pen, just like with the Fold 3 and the Fold 4 that you're going to need. But again, they made the special edition S Pen for the Fold slimmer, more compact. There's a case that's slimmer, that makes packaging it more compact. It's still a far cry from us actually having a silo to put the S Pen in, like we do with the S23 Ultra. I guess it's still good. We're going to really take it in that retrospect, but it's the same display. I can appreciate the bright display for inner display. But again, the S Pen support doesn't work on the outer display. 
And I guess maybe it's not that useful because the outer display is still skinny and I think I'm still gonna struggle to get used to it. But overall, it's the same display. and You do have the four megapixel under display camera. No changes there from what they told, but again, more on the specs and processing later. They're saying that that's improved in that retrospect. That's the display experience. For the specs and performance, yes, it is powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 mobile platform built for Galaxy. Now, foldables from Samsung have always had the best system on the chips and had the best love from Qualcomm compared to the Exynos of the S series, which obviously took a turn around with the S23 series with that Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 mobile platform built for Galaxy. It is here as well as expected. There isn't any of the overclocked version or special edition version is that same chip. So all the efficiency, all the performance and all the new benefits that come with it are gonna be here as well. You do have 12 gigabytes of RAM, but it is LPDDR5X from what we've been told up from the five version, which is great, faster, and I guess more efficient. And you do have the same 256 and 512 gigabytes of storage configuration with a one terabyte model as well. Again, no micro SD card slot. When it comes to the performance, it's par for the course. It should not be a problem. The 8 Plus Gen 1 was great. The 8 Gen 2 is going to be great as well, especially the mobile platform built for Galaxy from what we saw. As respects on the performance, I don't expect that to not be a bad thing at all. It should be great. Camera, hardware, and experience. Here's where, to be honest, I'm kind of just a bit suspect. Again, Watch out for my full camera comparison because once I do get it in, you know how I throw down the gone clip of doing my ultimate camera comparisons where I go through pretty much every feature and usability of the Fold 5 camera. I'll be honest, it's the same. And it's the same in also the annoying ways of the limitation. Now, don't get me wrong. This is fundamentally the same camera system. So we're talking about a 12 megapixel ultra wide. We're talking about a main 50 megapixel sensor. We're talking about a 10 megapixel 3X optical zoom. We're talking about a 10 megapixel outer display cover selfie. And of course the four megapixel under display camera. Here's where things get a bit weird for me, fine. Thanks to the process and power of the 8 Gen 2 with mobile platform built for Galaxy and all of that stuff, you do have 8K 30 frames a second up from 24 frames a second. It does have less drop and you do get stabilization. Again, it needs to be tested and verified, but I trust that's the case. We still have the weird limitation of the ultra wide. This ultra wide still cannot shoot in 4K 60 FPS. Like what you could do on the S22 series and the S23 series, it can only do it in 4K 30. I don't know why this is a limitation. You can do 4K 60 on the main camera then the free zoom, but not on the ultra wide. And again, it's not exclusive to the fold, but Samsung cameras don't allow you to switch between 4K 60 on all the rear lenses while recording on the same clip. What you have to do is you have to stop, then switch and start again. You can switch to the selfie, which I rate, allow us just to have that flexibility. The Pixel Fold does that. And it gets slated for, it's a Tensor G2 and it's not that powerful, but it's able to handle seamless video recording with the rear lenses perfectly. So I would have loved to see that, especially for the price point this is coming in as the ultimate camera experience when it comes to flexibility. You're putting 8K30 in there. Why not do that for the ultra wide? Yeah, more testing is gonna be needed when it comes to the camera experience because another thing that annoyed me is the camera UI when it comes to that outer display selfie button. It's still stuck in that weird annoying place on the top left or top right and it's small. I don't know. I just wanna be optimistic because I love the full camera experience because nothing beats having to use the main rear cameras for ultra wide and the main sensors to take pictures of yourself with your group and selfies in high quality and for self-capture. But then again, it feels like maybe there's slight negligence, even though there are obvious improvements. Now, software is running Android 13, but with One UI 5.1.1. How many point ones do you need, Samsung? But yeah, the Fold device next to the Flip 5, which we're gonna talk about in a separate video, pretty much are the first devices to have the absolute latest version of One UI on Android 13. Again, we know Android 14, One UI 6 beta is gonna be around the corner and probably a public release, maybe around September, October period. But for now, this is the latest version. What's new? Again, I'm not really too much of a software junkie as such, but the biggest thing that we're talking about is the improvement to the task bar with your recent apps. Because in the past, 
with the taskbar, you only had two recent apps that you could switch to, you know, switch through very seamlessly, but it can go up to four. So it does allow you to do that. You've got things like hidden apps. There's so many other different things in there, but fundamentally it's still Android 13 with all the things we've come to know and love when it comes to One UI. And to be fair, credit where credit is due, when it comes to especially the inner display software experience, Samsung have nailed it. They pioneered it. They've near enough perfected it, brute forced it, made it elegant, being able to run free apps at the same time and still do pop-up windows that you can resize, change how you... It's a clutch software experience for the inner display, which I have absolutely no complaints about. And if they're just gonna make it better and more refined with things like an improved taskbar amongst other different things as well, as well as things like apparently there's like a two-handed gesture mode where you can copy things from one app like the gallery to Samsung Notes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's clutch, it's clutch, it's clutch. But yeah, software-wise, pretty much very up to date when it comes to One UI. Now, another place that maybe kind of worries me, but doesn't at the same time because of my previous experience with the A Plus Gen 1 and the battery is the battery cell. Yeah, it's still 4,400 milliamps, still supports 25 watt wire charging, right? I'm not gonna say fast, it's wire charging, 15 watt wireless and 4.5 watts with the reverse wireless charging with PowerShare. I really was hoping to get at least 4,800 milliamps, but again, I do trust the 8 Gen 2 mobile platform built for Galaxy SoC to be a bit more efficient, but yeah, only time will tell, but I did have a great experience with the 8 Plus Gen 1 on the Fold 4, so I think it should follow up really well. Where is conserving the inner display brightness as well? but let's wait and see how that looks like. Right, it looks like this year due to inflation and other little things, it looks like we do have a slight price increase where it starts at £1,749 for the base model 256 and it goes all the way up to £2,049 for the one terabyte model. I'm a fold person, I'm a fold person and the fold foldable form factor is my favorite, but I don't know, I'm a bit, bit worried that compared to the fold four, how different is it? Yeah, spot the difference with the icy blue, but everything else, is it gonna be enough, especially against the onslaught and the competition that they've been bringing out their foldables this year? Yeah, only time will tell. But again, the king is back. How long it's gonna stay on the throne is one thing. What's your thoughts on the Fold 5, especially compared to the Fold 4 and the competition like the Pixel Fold and the other foldables that are out there with honor and potentially one plus as well bringing out a foldable let me know in the comment section below that's it for me ben from lover of tech if you enjoy videos like this you know exactly what to do hit the like button hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell so you're part of team tls to tech lover squad so you don't miss any future videos on the channel i hope you're all safe during this time i will catch you in the next one peace